talk about the fact is these documents, let's say we were non-Christians, okay? If you're a, a, a history major, if you're looking at ancient documents, sources rule. Earliest ones basically win, okay? Now, what's happening today in these specials, the ones that we watched that you were on, and also the ones that are coming out and so on, the thing is these specials are taking the Gnostic writings of 200 years after Christ, and they're trying to get parts of it back as close to the apostles' writing as they can. And then they're taking the New Testament documents. You've got nine sources. You've got Matthew, you've got Mark, you've got Luke, you've got John, you've got Paul, uh, you've got uh, Jude, you've got Peter, and uh, the writer of Hebrews, and who am I leaving out? One more. The fact is these sources, nine sources that uh, are all written before, say, the first century is over. Okay? In fact, tell us about these sources and how you would date them and why they are our best sources. And if you're a non-Christian just listening to this conversation, that you go to these sources for your information about Jesus and why it's accurate information. Oh, I quite agree, John. There's a, you might even call it a stealth scholarship at work. And I found it so frustrating in my involvement in the National Geographic uh, program that investigated the Gospel of Judas. Now, I think National Geographic did a great job and they were very fair to me. But what I noticed in some of the other participants was this tendency to take what clearly are second century, if not later, sources and sneak them into an earlier period to try to get the Gospel of Thomas and the Gospel of Mary, maybe even the Gospel of Judas also, and smuggle those later documents as close to the end of the first century as possible and then you will hear them in reference to the New Testament Gospels and other New Testament writings doing just the opposite, pushing them further away as close to the end of the first century, maybe in some cases even into the beginning of the second century so that they can then speak very loosely of early Christian writings or early Christianity. And then that is the backdrop to comments like diversity in early Christianity, as if to say the diversity, which is clearly attested in these second century documents, as if all that is going on at about the same time. And so when Mark writes his gospel, or Matthew writes his gospel, or when Paul writes his letters, it's all sort of happening in the same generation. And we've got this great big diversity, and it just so happens one stream won out. But is it any better than the other streams? Oh, who knows? And that's the part about it that I find frustrating. And frankly, it's, it's not critical, disciplined scholarship. It's something else. 